So we need to add windows and doors. So where do we get them from? Well, Cinema 4D's content browser has an incredible array of stuff to utilize, which is really, really good. And all of it is to scale. So when I made my room here, I wanted to make sure that I made it big enough that I could adjust things if I wanted to, which is why I said, you know, the two bathrooms are two meters by two meters, and then that room is a bit bigger. Okay, so it's four meters by five meters. Um, because under my content browser, which I'll need to bring back up, I can have a look through everything that will allow me to add in some stuff that's going to be really, really useful for me. So I'm just going to minimize my house builder there and let's have a look. So if I go uh, to the home and then if I go to uh, my presets, oh, wait. There we go. Um, all of the stuff when it comes to the content, sadly, for this one is under the studios. So if I go to studios and then if I go to oh, 3D objects, we've got architectural elements and we've got some stuff here that would be really good, like doors. So if I create a door, it gives me this lovely modern door uh, for me smack bang in the middle of my room okay which I can then edit and adjust okay so if I put it roughly where I need it to be okay there we go but what is also really good about this door model if we just focus in on it okay there we go is the door model comes with some great customizable stuff. So you can choose its height, so I could go 200 to match it, 80, which actually I think is what I put earlier, and global depth. So if you look at the thickness that it creates the door frame, so I just made a vault, um, so that's 100 and you could keep going. Oh no, you can't. Um, if you just lower that down so it's the same as the wall thickness for this, which is 10. There we go. If I get that and change that to 10, okay, I should be able to move it around so that it matches. Okay, that gives me the absolute thickness, so it should be exactly the same. Whereas we've got the ability of having a door frame here. So if I made it 15, can you see there's this inner distance, which is quite cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that so that it matches that inner distance. And there might be some tweaking required. So just sort of getting up close, moving that so that it's definitely in there. And then looking the other side and just shrinking it. But it's there, which is really, really cool. So you've got frame depth, which you can increase or decrease. Uh, you've got frame width. So if you had a, you know, you want a really big architrave around the outside or a smaller architrave around the outside, you can increase its rounding. Okay, you can do its offset. So depending on where that door actually sits, um, you can choose which side the door opens from, and you can choose how open or closed that office door is. Let's make it 90 degrees. There we go. So you can customize where the handle height is. You can customize its offset into the door. Okay. And you can increase or lower its scale depending on what you are after. It's, it's brilliant. Okay. So there we go. We've just added a simple office door into there, which I think I'm going to copy and paste a few times uh, so that we can sort out our office. So I'm just going to rotate that 90 degrees and using my top view, I'm going to move it over to there. I'm just going to turn off my physical sky so it gets that out of my way. There we go. So that door is going to open inwards into my building, into my toilet. Okay. 
OK. Might need to edit the size of that door frame a smidge, but I can do that in a minute, which is really good. And then I'm going to create another one of those, and I'm going to move it across. This one I'm going to have opening that side, so that we get the two doors opening that way. And now if I just go to my house builder, I just need to adjust whichever one it was that did that toilet door. There we go. Can you see how simple this is just to kind of put this together? So I might just increase that width a bit. So 83, 80, ooh, 8, it's a very, very tiny door, 83, and then scooch that one over so that it definitely sits within that frame. Isn't that brilliant? Okay, and we've got some doors in there. Now, if you may have noticed, in my content browser, okay, which I'll bring back up, we have some other things under the um, studio, and then we've got 3D objects, architecture, and then windows, okay, which is brilliant, because this will allow us to add in some, obviously, windows to our work. And you can see here, quite quickly, we've got a spiral staircase, we've got a straight staircase that you could have up depending on what you're going to do, and we've got some blinds. But definitely with the window, I'm just going to double click that and then get rid of my content browser. And then I'm going to find what it's done with my window. There we go. Woo, it's created me a really big window. But can you see here again? We've got customizability, so I can change its width and its height so that they're 80 and 80, and I know that that should fit in my window, hole, frame, sill, window hole, not sure, window gap. So if I just focus in on that, there we go, we've got our thicknesses and we've got our windows here, so that the frame sits inside. Here we go, and if we just zoom in on that, oop, maybe perhaps we should get the height right first. There we go. I mean, you may want to increase the size of it. It might be worth, you know, changing things like that. So you've got bottom hinges, so you can have the side open. This is, a, you know, this is absolutely incredible to just simply have in Cinema 4D in front of us. So there we go. We've got this window, which just sits within its frame. Okay, and let's have a look at some of these sort of settings. So inner offset, so you can choose how big that sort of outer inner frame is vertical opening so you could have it open if you want you could have the bottom hinges okay um, instead so you've got a horizontal opening distance so it could be one of those sorts of windows I quite like it uh, working that way so let's open the window a tad so you've got front glass and rear glass it's you know nice double glazing there um, the number of dividers, so if you want to sort of make it really oldie worldy, you know, there we go, or you can lower it right down to zero so you don't have any. Um, if you have got one, you can increase its divider width, which would make it ridiculous if you particularly wanted. I think I'm going to get rid of it completely, and then you've got other sort of settings to do with its dividers, handle position, so if you wanted it to be there or if you wanted it to be lower down so it'd be easier to open. Handle rotation, there we go, we can have it so it's quite obviously open. And it's it's all there, it's all really there for us um, and easily configurable in such a brilliant fashion. Now I can copy and paste that or maybe I'm going to make some instances so that they will all do the same thing um, without any problem whatsoever and I don't have to worry about, you know, changing them all. Maybe if you wanted to do a variety of different windows it's entirely up to you. Um, if not then just stick to what you've got, stick to this, stick to the instance and it saves you having to worry about producing more and more and more of them. So there we go, we've got two windows there straight away and now with those two selected I'm gonna command drag two more which I shall rotate 90 degrees and then I shall 
move so that they're roughly along that wall and then I'll have to tweak them individually so what have we got here so if I just press I want my keyboard to focus them into the wall so they're in the middle of that and then I go to my end view which for me was F3 if I squidge that along that one I'll need to squidge along even further press F1 let's have a mooch around there is my little building with windows and doors no problem whatsoever and catch me in the next video where we shall put some content in it from Cinema 4D's content browser